Okay, so now it's March 14, 2020. And I just can't get over how funny this cake is in terms of how high it is. <laughs> okay, people. So it's like, oh, I was going to say April. Mm, March. March 15, 2020. Anyway, before I go into War Room 2, <laughs> To continue working on uh, what do you call this? On this notice of claim, right? Um, because I've only got really a few more days to do this. First of all, I am not gonna sweat it, people, because as it stands right now, what March fifteenth, two thousand and twenty, I do not have a lawyer. I do not qualify for legal aid because the type of uh, legal situation I am in, I am suing the government for negligence on multiple levels with multiple departments. We know that, right? And because of that, taxpayers' dollars aren't used to pay the government because the government is above all and everybody even though it is the taxpayers who pay the government to protect the public. So it's almost like I don't belong in this public because it's okay for the government to uh, participate in gang stalking and, you know, the targeting of a family and individuals and they do it through their different ministries at different times you know, throughout years, it's not just a one-time incident. It starts to multiply and you begin to see a pattern, right? And unfortunately, people do disappear and, and or die or both, okay? Because that's the reality of it, people. <clears throat> you know, being on this countdown for this lawyer that might help me, even though I've never met him yet, you know, trying to cram all this shit in, like, in a day, or even two days for that matter, <clears throat> when I still got, like, three weeks left, you know, because I feel like, you know, I'm doing a solo anyway, people, and I really do feel, I don't know what to say, how to say it, but I feel really bad for people who can't read or write very well in terms of the English language. Because they're going into an English court system that expects the work to be, you know, the words to be written in English and to be fluent and to be the point and to do this and to do that. And, you know, it's like you got a million fucking hoops just to be able to get to the fucking door, right? And then you have to get through the door, right? And if you can't read or write properly, I just can't imagine people doing it because for my, and then having to do it for themselves with their grief, right? And with, them telling their story and the people around them aren't really paying attention because, you know, the world is going so fast and everybody else got their own problems that the last thing they want to hear about is bodies being illegally embalmed in hospitals after their organs have been pillaged, you know? It's a hard thing to start one, first of all, talking about it, and it's another thing to stand your ground on it because people will question you and they will, you know, they'll doubt you and, you know, they'll accuse you of things and they'll tell you that whatever they'll tell you, you know, you don't measure up and anything to wear you down and, you know, break your spirit and, you know, discredit you or oppress you, you know. And it comes, that too comes from different multiple levels because, you know, you've got your social circle, you know, you've got your peer social, you've got your family, you know, your social family network, right? And then you've got the, the people that you come into contact with on a professional level. And then it just kind of goes down the chain, right? So if you can't read or write very well and put down in words what you think happened, even though you know it happened, you know, I can't imagine what it would be like for those people, people, because I know how hard it is for me, and I got a pretty good grasp on the English language. It's not perfect. 
you know, I can get off with my little run-on paragraphs, and, you know, I can repeat myself sometimes too many times, but at the end of the day, you know, I can stack and pack it when it comes to words, right? So, I'm at the stack and pack point, stack and pack point of, um, what do you call? I'm at the tail end of it now. I'm, I'm writing in the corner, especially my conversation that I had when I specifically told her that Shimei was embalmed and that bitch ignored me. She completely ignored me, people. Right, which is negligence, which is negligence on a on a government official level, right? If you've got a citizen, because you're a government employee, okay, you know, and you're 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 paid to investigate deaths, right? And you already have a file that's been sitting in front of your face for the last year, and you never did your job the first time in terms of coming to the house you know, taping everything off and taking possession of the body and doing a full forensic investigation as to why Shimei was dead in the house suspiciously with nothing around her. In terms of no ashtrays, no glasses of water, no clothes, no cigarette packages, no drug paraphernalia, no food plates with food on it, nothing. Nothing. It was nothing around her, people. So why? Well, because obviously somebody cleaned up, right? I mean, there should have been an ashtray there. Because in her last Snapchat, when you think about it, she was smoking. So where the fuck was the ashtray? No, there was no ashtray in there. Couldn't find anything. The only thing I did find was Julian's drug phone. And that was on top of the dresser. And I did a video around that. And the cops ignored it. They gave him back the fucking phone. They didn't even look inside. That's what the cop told me. Well, we can't look inside. Because I said, well, why aren't you looking inside his phone? Oh, it's private property. Oh, what kind of bullshit is that? That's the kind of bullshit, right? That people, not even me, is people, are having to deal with. And if they can't read and write very well, the English language that is then it's going to be that much harder for them to get any kind of justice or to be treated fairly without discrimination, regardless of their ethnic heritage. Okay? So that, that's the first thing. That's that. So with that, I tell myself, okay, relax, just breathe. <laughs> right? It's all going to work itself out. One way or another, you're going to get to the end. Because that's my goal right now, people. is just to get to the fucking end. I'm tired of being in this tunnel with, you know, people poking at me as I'm going through it. On both sides. I'm being poked at. I've, I'm still in that fucking tunnel. Right? It started with Andre, really. And then it really hit hard with Uncle John. It was really bad with Uncle John. Right? And then... Same crap with me. So anyway, um, how many days is going to take me to kind of like tidy this up to the point where I feel satisfied with it before I hand it over to this lawyer? I was wanting it to be Monday, but it might take a few more days because I tell you, uh, yesterday I did get into the computer, um, but what I ended up doing was I had to go back into some of my old videos just to highlight certain dates because remember my big pile of paper? <laughs> it's still sitting there. I don't have time to go through each and every paper. <laughs> so I'm kind of cheating. I'm going back into my videos and I'm picking out key key videos that, you know, really emphasize as to what's going on and what's been going on. And I've, you know, I've taken two so far and I've put them up on the petition that I um, put up for Shmei on a provincial level. Right? Now, I did ask another organization in the States to help me, you know, somehow, some way, whatever they feel comfortable with. You know, um, I mean, obviously we're dealing with a separate country here. You know, United States and Canada. You know, I'm in Canada. They're in the United States. And, um, you know, th the steam around Shimei has, like, come down to a low perkle. 
you know, per, like you like a percolating. It's just on a low little, just a low little bubble. You know, it's a low boil. It's not even boiling. You know, it's just barely simmering. You know, in terms of the momentum to get justice for Shemaine. Like we're at the bottom of I don't know where we are, but we've got a long way to go before we can get any kind of justice for Shemaine. Or at least for me, right? <laughs> You know, but there are people signing this petition, so it's us. It's not even about me. It's about us. Because whatever whatever happens to Shemaine, you right, will go to the public. It, it, you know, whatever happened to Shemaine on that day in my dream was going towards Tisha's room, and Tisha was going to be next. And I woke up crying, and people, I've been crying ever since, and that's exactly what happened. Whatever the fuck happened to Shimei, which was, she was hot capped by Julian Johnson, right? And then that man walked down to Tisha's room, stood in front of Tisha's door, and said, Shimei's not responding, then stood back and let Tisha run by, and he followed, right? So there's that dream. Then what? Shmei died, okay? It was in my dream that she died, and I woke up crying. And I just did a video on that, like, what, a week ago? I've been crying ever since. And I'm still crying, right? So through this crying, I'm, have to, I'm having to draw on my English skills that are, like, at the bottom of the pit right now because I've been writing for so many fucking years in regards to, like, especially the foundation, you know, and as far as I'm concerned, the public union has squashed it, have literally fucking squashed it. It's enough that I live in a community where I have pockets of racist ethnic groups, the Chinese, the Filipinos, the Fijis, you know, Africans from Sudan, you know, those people from over there, you know, they don't they don't care about a universal school meal program people they're more interested in building up their churches and temples to promote their own religion within their own sector it's like a little cult of the same color and from the same region from where these people come from and just building a community in Canada but they're not concerned about the whole of Canada they're only concerned about that little pocket and I've talked about this before in the past right so, over the years, typing, typing, you know, trying to promote a universal, you know, music program, universal uh, school program, you know, universal this program, that program, you know, to try and bring the communities more than one together so that, you know, we can have more, better quality of living in fucking Canada, you know, instead of going into third world freaking conditions here, which we are in. Right? In many aspects. You know, the extreme is too extreme. You've got all these fucking monster homes being built like caddy shacks, you know, a hundred at a time every two days. Right? As the poorest of the poor are just going deeper and deeper and deeper. And, you know, we've got this this big gulf of, of poverty that's not moving. And because it's not moving, it's just it's just an open invitation for the predators in our community that some of them, yes, live in these monster homes from wherever they come from. It could be China. It could be Fiji. It could be anywhere. Right? India. Right? Fucking Britain. Doesn't matter. Okay? I mean, obviously in some areas you're going to get higher population in terms of, well, if there's more Chinese living in this area, which there is a fair amount, that house is still sitting over there up for sale, empty people. Nothing moves. The curtains never move. That's illegal, but nobody does anything about it, right? So, anyway. You know point is I'm not I'm I'm right now as I sit here trying to like go oh, just go sit down and finish it you're almost done you're three quarters done I'm three quarters done to the best of my ability even though I don't feel very optimistic about it right um, simply because I know how these people like to play 
right? They have already put themselves up one notch above you, and they will always be up one notch above you because of that government uh, protection in a financial sense in terms of their government employees, so therefore they're entitled to their pension plan, they're entitled to their vacation plan, they're entitled to their medical and their dental plan, they're entitled to their life insurance plan, they're entitled to their disability pension plan, they're entitled to whatever the fuck they're entitled to, and because they're entitled to it, and it puts them into a basically a middle class um, income, right, then um, you can't win. You can't win, right, in terms of getting justice, because it's a trickle-down effect. Just like you're coming into contact with them within the healthcare system, right, you know, dealing with a dead body on a machine, as they're tricking you to think that it's real and alive, you know, or, you know, plotting and scheming behind Uncle John's back so that they can steal his money, like... And then, you know, you just wherever it comes from, people, in terms of them, um, like Andre, they put their sights on Sierra, they kicked her out, and look at her now. Like, three quarters brain dead. Nobody knows what to do with her. The judge doesn't know what to do with her. Probation officers don't know what to do with her, right? Fucking lawyer doesn't know what to do with her. The mother, me, I don't know what to do with her, Right? in terms of the brain damage that occurred from that point forward, right? Because, you know, within 10 days from that action, Sierra became, uh, you know, injecting heroin, and it's been a downward spiral ever since. And that came from the public union sector people. That, you know, does Sierra have to take some responsibility in it? Well, yeah, obviously. But, you know, you have to also put yourself in her shoes <coughs> and understand... <clears throat> that some of the shit that goes on in communities is is done for for that specific reason to end up with the Sierras because then the Sierras in the community, these people that create the Sierras ultimately can pimp them. And that's just another form of underground economy that's being managed by the public union sector. Right? Because they're the ones with all the resources to put her into a safe environment so that maybe she might get, like, freaking at least a third back of her brain. But right now they're just hoping she'll OD and the problem will be done. And of course they're not going to harvest her organs because her body is polluted. Shimei was a different story. And because taxpayers' dollars are paying for this illegal organ harvesting just as it's paying for legal organ harvesting, right? They're going to do what they're going to do, right? They're not going to try and stop the Shemays from being murdered. No. No, because it brings them extra income. It brings them extra income into the facilities that these things are happening, right? Surrey Memorial Hospital got how many hundreds of thousands of dollars to have Shimei's body on a fucking so-called machine for nine days. Even though they listed it down that she was discharged on December 16th, she was still on machines until the 19th. Like, there's so much contradiction going on in Shimei's medical files. It's, it's like, if you can't read and write, you know, how the hell are you going to go to court and fight that on your own? Right? Because the system, those people have made it where you don't qualify for a lawyer. I didn't qualify for a lawyer with Andre. Only reason I got it for Andre people is because I did YouTube videos and I put it out there that I was going to the Supreme Court to get my grandson back. And then once I went to go file it, they sent me away and within a week or two I got a phone call and said, come on in. And then I got a lawyer. They denied me a lawyer with Uncle John, and what little lawyer that they did give me was an asshole that fucking basically accused me of being a hussy for the first 15 minutes of our 30-minute fucking, uh, what is it called, interview, right? Let me help you interview. I'm a real lawyer. I'll help you interview, 
right? That kind of interview, right? And then the other 15 minutes, he just basically told me I needed to go somewhere else. Right? Go to some hum human tribunal or something. So, I walked out of there mad with Shimei. And Shimei and I are arguing. Right? Because she just wants to see Uncle John. She didn't see that guy for what he really was, which was a snake. He was a distraction. He was to keep me away from the fucking courthouse, not to help me get there, people. Okay? He didn't care about Uncle John. Right? He's in that beehive mentality where the public union sector seems to think that, again, that they're above everybody else. They they live on a whole different fucking plateau. Right? And therefore, it makes them, gives them immunity to commit crimes against other human beings. So, didn't get a lawyer for Andre until I had to fight for Andre, right? And then I didn't get a lawyer for Uncle John, right? Can't go to legal aid, ask them, right? I only could go to pro bono. And the intake guy was an asshole. And the lawyer he hooked me up with was an asshole, right? So then what happens? Shimei, can I get a lawyer for Shimei? Can I go to legal aid and say, hey? No, of course not. If I go to pro bono, what are they going to do? Send me to another fucking asshole that's going to sit up there and tell me it's my imagination station? <clears throat> Right? After arguing with me for 15 minutes, calling me a bad fucking mom? That I should have been paying attention to what my daughter was doing? <laughs> Something dumb. <laughs> right? <coughs> you know, just to talk to piss me off, to derail me so I don't go back to court. Right? <coughs> and this other, you know, this lawyer. Now, there's two lawyers, right? One, one I'm going to meet, e once I have it written out. I'm just going to email it, and he's just going to pass it around. That's all he's going to do. And then maybe through that passing around, maybe there might be a lawyer that might be interested in helping. Right? And then the other lawyer is just, that's being passed over by somebody else is passing it to this other lawyer. I haven't even met this other lawyer yet. Thing is, I can't wait on a lawyer because I've been waiting two years for a lawyer. So I'm not going to panic because I'm getting panicky because, you know, I slept. I did all that cooking, right? You've seen that. And then, you know, yesterday I'm kind of tired. It's like 3 o'clock in the morning right now. I woke up. Right? And I'm going to, this is what I'm going to do today. Type. Type as my brain has this big, heavy boulder on top of it. And because of all the bullshit that I've had to deal with over the years in regards to typing and how meaningless sometimes it can all be because if the people around you want to keep you oppressed as in like the foundation they will keep you oppressed 20 years later people this foundation is going out the door because of the uh, oppression that's in my community if it's if I'm not dealing with little pockets of racist fucking individuals that are moving into my country en masse and taking over the land base, okay? You know, I'm dealing with a fucking racist and prejudice and biased public union sector who seem to think that they're above everybody else. So try typing your way through that one. Being positive for a universal school meal program as an example like those days are long gone well when you do this kind of stuff it's almost equal to if not similar to what I was doing years ago and if what I was doing years ago for something really 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 positive who's to say that what I'm doing right now is gonna get me anywhere in light of what I've already been through and don't forget, I also took it one step further with Uncle John. So I'm on going into step four now, right? First it was the foundation, then it was Uncle John, and now I'm writing up on Shimei. And if you notice, I'm on the same fucking treadmill, beating my head up against the wall with the same fucking people. And I'm not going anywhere with it. So when I sit down with that knowledge, now, in the here and now, to get that last quarter done of my notice of claim before I hand it over to other people and or both file it. It's just 
it's hard. So if you can't read or write very well, because, you know, you come from a different country and that's not your native language, and if they're going through something similar to what I'm going through, which I'm sure some people are, right, we just don't hear about it. I can't imagine what it would be like for them to try and fight for their families without any help. So, because I don't have any help with, like, in a lawyer aspect, or even in writing this stuff, right, You know, I, I can't get panicky about it. I can't. Because it's, it's, it's like, it's depressing people. You know? It's depressing. It's a place I don't even want to be at. I'm like, I'm not well. I'm tired. I'm worn out. You know? But, anyway... I think I have nothing else to say right now other than I'm working on it, okay? <laughs> and I'm going to put the link for the petition in the description box. I did put together a fundraiser, but I don't have a PayPal to uh, use at this point to hook it up. I was thinking of using... Andre's old PayPal account back in the day when I opened up that account with Uncle John, which is still on lockdown, people. Okay, it requires Uncle John's signature to release the $92 in it. Okay, because when they took Uncle John, I stopped the deposits that were being, or the withdrawals that were coming out of his account one was $40. It was going into Shimei's account, right? Because Uncle John and I, we had borrowed money on Shimei's trust fund when she decided not to go to college, and we used that to fix the car or whatever the fuck it was that we needed at the time, <coughs> right? And then we were putting back $40 a month to build it back up so that when she did go to school, you know, it was back up there a little bit, right? Versus where it is right now. So when they took him... You know, I just, I didn't know what the hell was going on. So I just phoned up the trust company and I said, look, just stop taking, stop taking money out of the account until I figure out what the fuck is going on here. Because I don't want anything going NSF because I didn't know if they were going to close the account or what. Right? Anyway, um, see, I have to go type, right? I don't even know what I was talking about. Oh. What was I talking about? Oh, she? I'm worn out. Right? Completely. I'd have to turn this off and go listen. <laughs> right? Something about something there. Right? I don't know. Oh, yes. I know. I know now. So... And then Andres just I can I can do deposits into it people. That's still I can still do that. I just can't take anything out because when they took Uncle John, they took over his account and then made it where I couldn't do what I used to do because officially I was the one with power of attorney. That's why they kicked out my card. Because that was the only legal way that they could uh, remove me from having access easily to that account. In terms of a printout. So I could see what was being done. Right? They never did take me to court to have that done. So through their rush to steal Uncle John's money, basically that account, after all these years, is still sitting there. And it requires Uncle John's signature to release the money. Now, that account has a PayPal to it. And I'm like, okay, maybe I should use that account right, for this fundraiser for a lawyer, which I've 
capped at $50,000 because I'm being told I need at least $50,000 in order to retain a lawyer. So I capped it at fifty. I just need to attach it to a PayPal account. And then, of course, I slept on it when I went and rested for a little while. And, and I'm thinking, well, you can't really do that because, you know, the lawyer would have to fight for it. And that's the point. The lawyer does need to fight for settling that matter, just like the lawyer needs to fight to settle the matter of Shemay's trust account that requires Uncle John's signature and my signature to release it to a dead person. Okay? Because when she was alive, she couldn't access it because Uncle John had been medically kidnapped. And he wasn't available anymore because he was tucked away like Fraser Health Authorities and CIBC's dirty little secret. So the lawyer's going to have to deal with that, right? So where does it matter where this $50,000 goes to? Let it pump up into CIBC's bank account. And they'll be like, damn, money, money, mmm, mmm. Little do they realize that that money is to kick them in the fucking ass. Or I get another PayPal account and I put it in there. <coughs> so there is a little fundraiser there to try and raise for $50,000. I just haven't launched it yet. Because <laughs> I have to hook it up to a bank account. And right now, you know, I'm going with the path of least resistance so I'm like very 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 tempted to put it in to that one with Andre since it's on lockdown anyway because if a lawyer is going to help he's not going to say oh give me the 50 grand right now he'd be happy to know that it's fucking on lockdown and all he has to do is take the key and unlock it and go get his money plus more right so I'm kind of in a dilemma I don't know what I should do it's easier just to put it in with the existing PayPal, assuming that everything's okay. My son would have to help me through that one because he helped me set up that account when Andre was wrongfully taken. And I had to go fundraise or do whatever. I cashed in my life insurance policy to take it to the Supreme Court to get my grandson back because I uh, didn't qualify for a lawyer. All okay. right. Just like I didn't qualify for a lawyer with Uncle John. Just like I don't qualify for a lawyer with Shemay. Unless, of course, I can come up with 50 grand. What kind of justice system is that? And then if you're coming into this country and you can't read or write English very well and you find yourself caught up in that fucking drama... <laughs> right? Because you're not one of those rich immigrants. Because you're not one of those rich immigrants. See, the rich ones, they don't have to worry about it so much. Because they got money. They can go around bragging around town how they're fucking so rich, right? <laughs> but the poorer ones, you know, just like everybody else, the average Joe, you know, the average Jane, that kind of thing. Then, I don't know, people. I can't imagine what it would be like for them. That's why the public union does what it does, because it can get away with it, because they know that probably 99.9% .9 of the population won't fucking fight back. Right? Because there's too many hurdles in front of you in that fight. Right? So anyway, I'm three quarters done with my notice of claim to the best of my ability. And I'm not going to sweat it for another day or two or three, even if it takes th three days, four days to gather everything up for this lawyer, right? Then so be it. Because at the end of the day, I'm going to file this with or without a lawyer. So I, I can't have a lawyer putting pressure on me at this point because... After I file it, if the lawyer really wants to help, the lawyer can sign on after I file it. Right? Right? It doesn't have to be before. It can be always after. Just like with that fundraiser. Wherever I set it up with a PayPal, that 50 grand can sit there. Like it's sitting in Uncle John's bank account, that $92. Right? You know what I'm saying? So these things here... 
I'm going to photocopy this. This is the printout. Since the time shemay has been gone. So this lawyer has no surprises in terms of I do YouTube videos. Alright. But if he's done his homework, he'd know. <laughs> right? So, and I... Ugh, I wrote out another six more pages as if I don't have enough of this stuff already in that big pile of papers that I'm refusing to sift through. I'm still doing this, people. Why? <laughs> that relates to the corner. Just jogging my memory. That's, that's what that is. Right. Uh, yeah. And then once I get that down, that's that's pretty much it. Just a few more things. I'm gonna make sure I highlight um, energy weapons, right? I'll make sure I highlight that because they're using energy weapons against us. I have documentation of that. I have documentation of Project Bluebeam, and I have documentation on more than one occasion with energy weapons that go real fast and that are being um, controlled by joysticks. I think it's called a stingray or something like that. It's it's the military uses it, right? <clears throat> they use reflection, <clears throat> and through that reflection, somehow it, and then they use a joystick, right, to to make the energy go where you want it to go. And the, yeah. So I have documentation of that, right? And I do believe that they target cer certain houses. And I believe that this house was targeted before I even moved in. I do. Because it pretty much started happening right from the beginning. And it's a rental, right? And before they'll target the rich or the middle class, especially if the public union sector, it's the public union sector who's targeting at us. And it's the middle class who is targeting at the, you know, the rental, the renters. Remember in the good old days? Oh, be a renter. It's uh, You'll have less responsibility, less worry. You won't have to worry, you know, about this and that, maintenance. Whoa. Fast forward, what, 30 years, 35 years? Now nobody wants to be a renter because there is no more affordable rentals. <laughs> How do you think they're pushing out people from some of these houses with energy weapons? Right, and the more they bring in these these smart meters and you know these smart appliances or whatever they have with the TVs and stuff now, right? You know, these things are conductors between the energy weapons that are going to be flying through your fucking house. Like seriously, because these things go fast, right? They're like the speed of light, eh? But they're ultimately controlled by somebody else on another end. And because of the Wi-Fi, you know, th th there's ways of, of rigging houses where you don't even notice it. Right. They just have to point it in your direction if it's out in the streets. So something across the street over there, mainly. But I have it in the back, too. And Project Bluebeam, that comes from above. Right? That's something else. And now we have coronavirus, right, to keep everybody on their toes. I want to do a video on that, but I have to focus on this stuff, right? Okay. <clears throat>